I think Ian has given us a, a very excellent introduction to the, the broad uh, problems that face us in magnetosphere, magnetosphere coupling, uh, ionosphere now being a word we don't mention except to people who've measured it for years. I'd like to show uh, in the first slide, <laughs> it works if you just press down. Uh, this is a bit of a problem seeing the slide from this angle. Uh, a, a view, essentially, which is uh, of our own ignorance of what's going on rather than what we know. Uh, much of what's there is incorrect. Uh, it's smooth because we don't have the measurements to give us the detail which uh, it would illustrate the true physical processes. Uh, this is a slide that uh, Ian and I cooked up several years ago. Uh, there are many things that now go on in this particular slide that uh, aren't indicated there. With respect to thermoplasma, which we're concerned with here, uh, we're talking about plasma with energies between perhaps a hundredth of an EV going up to perhaps five electron volts. And we know that uh, we have three general regions uh, where thermoplasma uh, is found, easily found. Uh, we have the plasmosphere region in here, which is surrounded by ring current. Uh, Perhaps this should have been rotated around out of the plane of the slide. We have a, a trough region, which uh, it probably exists just to the equatorward edge of the plasma sheet, uh, the plasma sheet possibly being the uh, projection of the uh, diffuse aurora. Discrete aurora occurring on the high latitude side of the plasma sheet. And then we have the large uh, polar cap region where we have a, an absence of plasma, uh, presumably because we have these outflows that Ian was referring to uh, along these long field lines which may connect out through this or in some way uh, essentially exhaust the plasma that's uh, stored there. We have a number of, of different problems uh, that are uh, hidden by a nice uh, neat schematic like this. Uh, for instance, we have to ask what is the distribution of ionization along the magnetic field lines, looking down like that. We really have no idea. We know what it looks like up to about 3,000 kilometers, that is at the lowest parts in here, and we know that when you fly a satellite across it, you see a very sharp density discontinuity, the plasma pause, but we really don't know how it's adjusting itself along the magnetic field line in response to pressure gradients, uh, gravity, which is uh, just relatively unimportant. It just isn't isn't something you really need to do and put in theoretical studies. Uh, we may have parallel electric fields induced by uh, ring current protons with uh, anisotropic uh, pitch angle distributions. We don't know if the thermal plasma can actually penetrate through those particles efficiently. This may affect some of the things that uh, Richard Thorne will talk about later. Now the applications of all of this are uh, a bit more complicated. The uh, global distribution of thermal plasma depends very crucially on the uh, global pattern, time-dependent pattern of uh, global electric fields. Uh, in this uh, context, one could say that the distribution of thermal plasma is a secondary effect of a primary cause, the primary cause being the, the electric fields that are set up uh, throughout the magnetosphere. In any case, uh, there is certainly the possibility of loss of plasma. Uh, one continually sees at high latitudes uh, all the way down uh, fr from what we term here an inner plasmosphere and an outer plasmosphere. In all of these regions out in here, one finds an outflow of plasma. Now, it does depend on local time. It's a, a complicated topic, but much of this is uh, uh, certainly indicative, as Ian pointed out, that uh, the, the, these protons are being lost out of the magnetosphere. They're not reappearing at some other local time sector and being pushed back in. At least the area where that could happen is getting smaller and smaller. It must look like, a, if it really is happening, that they're coming back into the atmosphere, it must be a very small location that we haven't found yet. And it's easier to believe right now that they're just uh, going away from the magnetosphere continually. And Ian has pointed out that the, this affects the, the helium budget in a very crucial way. Uh, what we're trying to indicate here are, again, the three different regions, the high latitude polar uh, wind regions where you have what appears to be, from observational evidence, a, a fairly continuous outflow of plasma going out like this. Uh, you have the plasma trough region in here, where the field lines uh, uh, appear to be closed, although they may be open at times. Uh, you have a theoretical problem, which has to be resolved, of what happens when you have these colliding beams of plasma coming out of opposite hemispheres. Do they set up shock fronts? Is it just a big amorphous blob of plasma that accumulates there and sort of moves back down the field line as this whole convection pattern rotates around the Earth. It's uh, very difficult to know. You have the same sequence uh, inside here, uh, and I'd like to draw a distinction between the inner plasmosphere and outer plasmosphere in the sense that we know that there are very strong impulses of uh, westward electric field which drive plasma inwards on the night side. And when this happens, much of the plasma that's stored along the magnetic uh, flux tube is jammed down into the ionosphere. Uh, it does this 
If you looked at the total velocity of the plasma, of course, you have a parallel component, you have a perpendicular component, so you get velocity vectors which sort of point in towards the equatorial regions. It's a, a region which is uh, a topic of actually computing what the temperature and density uh, is when you have these very impulsive fields uh, associated with substorms. It's um, a very interesting topic and a number of people working on it right now. I think that uh, brings us fairly well up to date on, on what we, we think we know. Theory uh, certainly is ahead of experiment in this particular area and uh, it's no wonder uh, if you look back in the papers of 1960 uh, IGY period, the thermal plasma had the same, the same general characteristic as the ether of special relativity. Uh, that is, that it was always postulated to be there, but you didn't know much about it. But whereas the ether has been proven not to exist in some people's minds, at least we know we do have some th thermal plasma sitting out there.